American boots on the ground in Kosovo. Could this become the next Ukraine? Let's talk about it on the Hot Zone. Hey folks, Chuck Holton here. They, most people have no idea that we still have hundreds of troops stationed on the ground in Kosovo. Right now, things are getting pretty hot over there and the K-4 United Nations Peacekeeping Force, or NATO Peacekeeping Force, that's been there since the 1990s is really right in the thick of things. They've had over 30 peacekeepers wounded in the last couple of days. Take a look at this uh, documentary that I made about Kosovo that'll give you some good history about the conflict there. The violence that has plagued Kosovo goes back for generations, and it stems from ancient rivalries between the Albanians and the Serbs. The country of Yugoslavia was born out of the ashes of World War I and combined several kingdoms on the western half of the Balkan Peninsula in Europe. And while American culture might see diversity as a good thing, the many ethnic and religious divisions in Yugoslavia proved to be its undoing. What followed the Soviet era has been a slow train wreck of wars and uprisings that continues to the present day. The country of Yugoslavia is no more, replaced by nine separate countries, some of which continue to experience geopolitical upheaval. These tears in the social fabric of Balkan society are nowhere more evident than in Kosovo, one of the fragments of Yugoslavia, which hasn't yet convinced the world that it's a separate country. Over the last two decades, the people living here have paid the price for that uncertainty. In the 1990s, ethnic tensions erupted in violence with over a million people displaced. That's when NATO stepped in. In 1999, UN peacekeepers were deployed to Kosovo to put an end to the suffering and broker a ceasefire between the warring parties. 13 years later, that uneasy peace still holds, but the tensions remain. Most people in America don't realize that there are still U.S. troops on the ground here, and what they're doing might surprise you. The friction taking place in Kosovo is very similar to that seen along other conflicted borders around the world. From the Arizona-Mexico border to the frontier between Afghanistan and Pakistan, all share the same thorny, complicated issues that result in problems like drug and human smuggling, social inflammation, and other geopolitical problems. It's not about Muslims versus Christians. It's nationalism over here. It's about Serbia and it's about Kosovo. The Kosovars are, are, are made up of about 90% Albanians and they would like to have their own country here uh, called Kosovo. Serbia probably wouldn't have a problem with that except for the fact that up in the north there are a lot of minerals and uh, there's a lot of uh, natural resources that Serbia would like to keep. And so the dispute is really over those resources and the cultural differences between the Albanian Kosovars and the Serbian Kosovars. There are atrocities on both sides. There are no angels here in Kosovo. Part of our legacy here was the, the peacekeeping to uh, cease that uh, inter-ethnic violence that was uh, going on about 12 years ago. The UN mission here is known as K4, and it's made up of over 30 countries. The government of Kosovo has, with help from various world bodies, tried to get these two groups to integrate by building housing developments for Serbs in Albanian areas. These are relative ghost towns to this day, as the age-old rivalries prove very hard to break. The predominantly Christian Serbs and mostly Muslim Albanians keep an uneasy peace with each group bearing the memory of atrocities committed against it by the other. Kosovo Serbs, particularly in the south, are seeing their homes vandalized and trashed and wrecked. Um, the Kosovo Serbs up north are going out of their way to agitate the Kosovo Albanians and pick on the government of Kosovo. They're very resistant to having the government of Kosovo imposed in the north. Like other disputed areas around the globe, corruption plays a large part in maintaining the status quo. And the weak central government here makes Kosovo a hotbed for organized crime. Dating back to July of 2011, roadblocks really started appearing in um, northern Kosovo, preventing um, uh, mostly institutions of Kosovo 
and also K4 to an extent from driving up north and also ULEX. One of K4's jobs has been to remove these roadblocks, and on one occasion in January 2012, doing so resulted in a firefight with angry locals in which two German peacekeepers were wounded. We removed a, 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 what they considered a strategic roadblock at a place called Rudari, and we got the jump on them, so they were very, very agitated about that, and they were pretty upset for a good three weeks. We were getting very direct threats. The peacekeepers here seem to be well regarded, more so by the Kosovo Albanians than the Serbs, but the K-4 mission is not to take sides, only to ensure freedom of movement for all parties. This task has been accomplished by the 30 contributing nations which make up the multinational battle group year after year. In 2012, part of that job fell to the more than 800 U.S. National Guard troops who comprised the American commitment to K-4. We put together a team from all over the United States of 30 different states uh, in our battle group. We have eight different countries that support us, uh, that we work hand in hand with. Learning the mission from a, uh, uh, a NATO, from an international perspective, was much different uh, than other deployments we might have seen in Iraq and Afghanistan as an organization. They're headquartered here at Camp Bonsteel, an hour south of Pristina. At nearly 1,000 acres, Bonsteel was built to sustain up to 7,000 troops, several times the number who live here today. The base is well equipped with restaurants, a movie theater, fitness centers, and a well-stocked post exchange. We spent the night at uh, Camp Bonsteel, which is kind of their main post here. So today we're driving up to uh, what they call Gate 1, which is uh, right on the administrative boundary line between uh, what's considered to be Kosovo and Serbia. And that's a very much disputed area where uh, they've had some, some more recent action in the form of uh, uh, conflict as they go and try to remove roadblocks and ensure freedom of movement for the, the populace there. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot more tension in that area. This is the main crossing point for traffic coming south into Kosovo. And smuggling is a major issue in this area. Because the boundary with Serbia is so porous, the National Guard spends lots of time exploring the remote regions along the border, looking for illegal crossing points. They've got a lot of refugees that come through here, and they're just now standing up an infrastructure to help deal with them. Worse than here, that they, they come here. Afghanistan, Pakistan, oh, Africa, right. from uh, Greece, from the east. Kosovo is a really good transshipment point. Great place for people to use is sort of like a truck stop. The borders are fairly porous. It's very difficult for them to enforce the borders and you know check things as they go through because they don't pay the border police very much. And so they get a lot of traffic going through back and forth. A lot of uh, human trafficking. There's a lot of human trafficking, yes. Whole humans, pieces of humans, take your pick. The infrastructure is standing up to try and get a grip on the human trafficking and the way people move through here. And we're kind of trying to, we're watching that develop and it's a good place to meet people. A lot of interesting people go through that. The biggest problem that people have uh, on the Kosovo Serb and the Serbian side is that because they don't recognize Kosovo's independence, they don't think that they should have to go through customs to go into what they believe is part of their country. This control point lies along the administrative boundary line between Kosovo and Serbia back behind me. Some of the Serbs have had a problem with it being here because they don't believe it needs to be because Kosovo doesn't have a right to exist. For that reason, they came and burned it to the ground at one point and that resulted in a larger American and NATO presence here, a place they call Gate One. The military presence has been enhanced here since last summer because of the, uh, the gate being burned down last year. Part of what our mission up here is to make sure that the bypasses that we have blocked with Serbia are staying blocked. And uh, we also set up vehicle control points at other unauthorized entry points to control the, the amount of unauthorized goods coming in. The population of Kosovo is uh, very cooperative with us. They're very thankful, obviously, that we're here. And they're looking for unity within Kosovo and for the Kosovo government to move forward uh, in their progression, in their forming uh, and movement towards becoming a country at some point. Kosovo has the youngest population in all of Europe but it still faces the same kinds of political problems that you find everywhere else. One of the big problems here is unemployment. The rate is above 60%, and these political parties may not be able to do much about that. They're having a hard time 
providing for the essentials that the people need. They had a particularly difficult winter this year. They got more snow this year than ever with everything from elect electricity to food to basic services to education. They're in a really rough spot. And the government right now doesn't seem to be doing much to help. Today we're on a patrol in these uh, remote mountainous regions of northern Kosovo uh, because these mountain roads are used by smugglers to bring in uh, everything from drugs to people to uh, illegal firewood, you name it. The peace and quiet in the mountains of northern Kosovo, along with the beautiful views, made it easy to forget the turmoil that has gripped this land for so many decades. But that didn't last for long. When we got near the border, we found an entire hillside stripped bare of the lush forest, which had stood there only weeks before. They use wood for cooking, for heating. It's cheaper than propane and easier for them to use. So wood is a huge commodity here. Wood cutting here for fuel has been a custom for as long as history has been recorded. It's a, a large part of their uh, of their natural resource in terms of uh, taking care of their families. There's been an environmental protection bent in both countries, Serbia and Kosovo, to preserve those trees. Serbians cutting in Kosovo, uh, Kosovars cutting in Serbia. Um, bottom line is, it's illegal. Uh, they have a lot of problems with uh, basically uh, timber uh, poachers. You know, they come up here and, and cut firewood illegally. It's not only taking that resource away, but there is no opportunity uh, being uh, taken advantage of to replenish that, that resource that's being harvested. It increases tension with law enforcement on both sides because that's just one more thing that they gotta look after. If you look down the hill there, there's a, a, a hillside that, that's been completely uh, denuded of timber and then burned. It's a, a real mess. When it's harvested without a permit, it's not properly managed, it's not replanted, it's gone forever. And that's the issue that Kosovo has with it. And that's why they really need to try and shut it down. We've just come upon some guys that are engaged in illegal logging right now. And these guys are known to shoot at anybody that comes up on them. We found these Serbs hard at work stealing an entire forest, coming across the border and shipping the stolen lumber back north. K4 doesn't have the authority to make arrests and must remain neutral between the two countries. In order to get more intelligence about the timber thieves, the soldiers approach them, pretending to be lost. Since there were no English speakers in their group or Serb speakers in ours, a tense game of charades ensued. We ended up sharing some of our MREs in water with them and leaving, frustrated that we couldn't do more to stop the destruction. It's a much different mission than Iraq and Afghanistan. And uh, we'll be able to look back here someday and, and, and tell our children that, you know what, I was part of that. Uh, and I helped bring this region to where, where it is today. Our last day in Kosovo, we visited the Tower of Gazimistan. Built on a plain northwest of Pristina to commemorate the Battle of Kosovo, a struggle that took place between the Serbian Christians and Muslim armies, not in 1989, but in 1389. But for the people of Kosovo, this still kind of qualifies as recent history. A visible reminder that old feuds here die hard. And while we may see a resurgence of the Cold War in the coming decade, this region's conflicts tend to be very hot and brutal. On the so these deep-seated divisions between the Kosovars and the Serbs are going to continue. There's no two ways about that. And the real question is, uh, why does Russia uh, support the Serbs over the Kosovos? Well, they basic, basically do that simply because the United States supports Kosovo. We're one of the few countries that recognizes Kosovo as a country. And uh, the, the Russians are very tight with Serbia. These are all part of those like nine countries that came out of the balkanization of the former Yugoslavia. Uh, of course, Russia and Vladimir Putin would like to reconstitute the Soviet Union and get all those countries back under their purview. Uh, but that is so far not happening. And the real question is, what's it going to cost America? We'll see. Take care.